debugging, debugging, debugging. I never know whether to say debugging or debugging, because debugging just sounds. Anyway, I spent a long time fixing bugs, and I finally succeeded. And usually, when the whole program starts falling apart, I well, my debugging strategy in the past has just been to start, like give you an example. Okay, so. Let's go to the board class because it has the most issues. Um, okay, so let's say the white pieces uh, set was giving me problems. Right when I was about to access it, I would be like, okay, um, num for piece P and white pieces. S out. I would start, you know, I would iterate through the set, print everything I need to know, or maybe I would S out white pieces dot size, right? And I would use, I would do that to debug. I, I didn't know any better. And then I, um, it was actually a, a week or two ago, I went to meet with a fellow programmer. His name was Chris Schneider. He's a, he's a grown up and a professional. But anyway, he recommended that I use the debugging features built into my IDE. What a novel idea. So now I put breakpoints in and I run the program and I can check my variables in real time. I did not know that I could just open this thing up and scroll. I can, you know, open up maybe the board object and actually look through all the variables. It was amazing. So I don't think I would have been able to find the bugs I just fixed if I didn't use these tools. But anyway, let's get to what the bugs were. I shall run my program. And now in the process of fixing these two huge ones, I did discover uh, some minor bugs, but that those have to do with the castling logic, which, eh, you know, I might as well just rewrite that all, all of that, because it's a little weird. But anyway, so one of the big problems was I was trying to implement promotion, right? Which I ended up doing today. And you can, in my previous video, you can see when I discovered this bug, I was just, you know, marching some pawns down the board, minding my own business, trying to implement promotion or test my implementation. I was doing all this, you know. And I came here and attacked this pawn, putting the king in check, and the program crashed. And I was like, huh. What is this? Is it maybe when pawns put kings in check, it has nothing to do. It was actually a null pointer exception. And I drilled through and looked more. And what it was, the null pointer exception was being thrown when I asked for the king's coordinate. So I was saying, somewhere in its checking, you know, the program removed the king. And, you know, I had no idea what to think of it. So what, what, the, way I, the way I checked for, let's say, um... The way I see if a piece is in check, or the way I see if a, if a move is legal, is I tentatively make the move and then run queries to see, well, now is anything in check? If it is, I save that variable and then restore things to the way they were. Well, that was happening twice in a row before getting restored. So what was happening was, I'll go ahead and close it and open it up again. I'll go ahead and wait for my computer to open it up again. Oh, oh, right, yeah, run it four times. That's good. Oh, please don't. Uh, I'm abusing my poor MacBook. Okay, let's just let's just use the fourth one. So I thought maybe it's just with pawns. Maybe there's just some weird pawn logic that, you know, when they check the king, the king disappears. So, so I ran it with a bishop and attacked it like that, and I got the same no pointer exception. So what was happening is when I made this move, the program was checking. It was running two queries. When I was making the move, it said, well, would that put white in check? If so, it's, Ill it's illegal. Would that put black in check? If so, we need to put a little plus thingy down here. And then in the process of saying, would that put black in check, it's also asking, would that be a checkmate? So it made this it made this pretend move, right? The move hadn't been made yet, but it pretend made it to think. And then it also pretend made the move that took the king 
to see, hmm, would that, um, would that, would that be a checkmate, or would that be a check if we took the king? That's not supposed to happen. I have the program built in such a way that the, the king can't be taken, and no piece can, it's never, it's never going to be a possibility for you to take the king unless two moves down the road. And that's what the program was doing. It was without me knowing, thinking two moves down the road and saying, huh, throwing throwing a situation at a function that is built not to that is built to assume that the king is still there. It was throwing a situation saying, hey, would it be check if I moved from uh, here to there and took the king? And the program was saying, ah, where's the king? And it crashed, right? So the program was thinking two moves ahead when it really shouldn't have been. I have to be really careful when I make these tentative moves only to check something. I always restore them afterwards, but what this was doing is it made a tentative move, move and ran a query. That query called a bunch of other functions, and one of them made another tentative move, and it made a whole set of them, and one of them was taking the king. And then the program, by the time it got back to somewhere else, said, oh, the king is not here, I'm going to throw a null pointer exception. So that was that was what I dealt with today, and it, it was a mess. The way I fixed it was, well, I t toyed around with a couple of ways to fix it. I said, well, maybe if maybe if the move that we're thinking about is a move that takes the king, we just return true or return false or something like that. But I thought, no, 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 that's that's putting a a band aid on a much bigger problem because this shouldn't even be. You know, we shouldn't even be asking this function for a situation in which the king is being taken. So what's going on here? Why are we going two moves deeper? And then I, I looked around, I really studied what, you know, the message flow of the program and found out that it's all coming down to the checkmate logic. And it was written, it was written pretty poorly. So I corrected the checkmate logic and voila, all the, all the problems are gone, or so I thought. And then I came and I tried to move, well, let's promote a pawn real quick. That's going to be fun. Hmm. But I tried to move a queen. I was actually just kind of messing around with the program. Admire. I was like, ooh, look, all the rules. It looks so great. I'm so, I'm so awesome. And then the queen was just, anyway, so here we go. Check. Move here. Promotion. Booyah. Which do we want? Let's go with the queen. Boom. Is that not awesome? Anyway. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, queen. I was like, hmm, let me move my queen out to here. Play around. Maybe I'll take this pawn and I'll be check. Right? The king will move. And here's another issue, right? It's part of the castling logic. When I added the, the these squares to the possible moves for castling... Uh, I kind of permanently added them, right? So the game doesn't think I can castle, but the is legal move, the is legal move function doesn't. Basically, I'm giving the is legal move something, function something that I shouldn't be giving it, and it's allowing the kings to move to these tiles no matter where they are. It's not considering it a castle because it's not taking the rook. So it's not technically a problem with the castle logic, it's a problem I created when trying to write castle logic. See, it still it works, and I couldn't do that again. It's just a minor bug, and I'm not too worried about it. But the queens, and it was only, it was with the horizontal move. See, look at this, I love this. I'm in check, and my queen can move here or here. Like, I like when my program reminds me of things, right? I was going to try to move my queen over here, and it says, nope, can't do that. And then I sometimes I get upset and say, I taught you. I taught you to know that. You'd be nothing without me. But here we go. I click the queen, and all of its pos all of these horizontals are lit up, which means that I can, without a doubt, make that move. Those were not. It was just disin discluding. Disinclude? Discluding? Ex oh, dear. It was excluding random, seemingly to me, um... <laughs> horizontal moves and I didn't know what the deal was and I, I eventually found it and and here's the here's the really funny part get all points between points diagonal this function that I was trying I tried to make a video explaining the is legal move function and today I was going through 
and I was um, I was trying to explain this function, and I just got completely tripped up. So you know what? Looking back on it, I have no idea how this function works. And then I kind of figured it out. I, I you know I understood enough that I could use it. But then I I said you know I really don't know what this function would do if you passed it two points that were not diagonal from each other. And that means that they're not diagonal means diagonal in perfect proportion x and y. You know. If you take the x and y, you, you make a perfect square, right? You can't have, otherwise it's an L shape, some form. You know, those are L moves. A diagonal, the change in, absolute value of the change in y is equal to the absolute value of the change in x, if you want me to explain it in mathematical terms. So I said, well, I have no idea what this function would return if you passed it non-diagonal two coordinates that weren't diagonal from each other. You know, it would return the weirdest stuff. Well, guess what I was doing in my is legal moves function? I was passing it points that were not diagonal from each other because I was taking. I'll go to is legal move again. Hello. Okay, is legal move. Let's find the the new and improved queen logic, and you can compare it with the queen logic that I had before. But I was passing. Oh, I still am, but I, I addressed it in the function itself. So, first of all, as I was running all three of these at once and adding all three of these sets to tweeners and then filtering through, and I thought that wasn't a very good way to do it, I should probably do them all separately. But anyway, I was. This function, is legal move, is going to. The only things being passed into it, they're going to be legal coordinates, meaning 1 through 8. And they're going to be possible moves for the queen. So it, I'm receiving possible moves for the queen, and I'm running get all points between diagonal and all of them. Not all possible moves for the queen are diagonal. A lot of them are horizontal or vertical. So I was running this function on non-diagonal points, and it was giving me back the weirdest results. Like I'm, I'm saying I would click on the queen here and maybe this wasn't highlighted and that one and maybe that one. And I I was looking at maybe in relation to the kings, what is it? You know, maybe if it was checking its own king, it was saying it was illegal because I had, you know, put the wrong team in somewhere, you know, flipped a boolean, something like that. But it was none of that. So then I thought, oh, it's this darn function. So get all points between points diagonal. So then I went back to it and... And it's just this simple. Protect where I get all points between points diagonal. So it's it's a lesson, right? Guys, protect your methods from yourself. Even if you know you're the only person that's ever going to be calling these, protect it from yourself. So here's the code I added. Right? All I did was say if larger x minus smaller x is not the same as larger y minus smaller y. What this says, if you didn't give me a diagonal, I'm returning an empty set. I'm not even going to run all this all this crap because this code is highly dependent on having diagonal points passed into it. So it's just a little bit of protection code. You know, if, if you have a, a program that takes a, a field, you know, and, and it can't be negative, you know, say enter the time for white, right, if it's a chess program and you're entering the time protect it from a negative value you know put in a little line of code if value is negative you know system out print line ah just put that so you'll look back and you'll know or maybe something more professional like invalid input time can't be negative you know i would just put a big ah maybe a sad face but the idea is to protect your code even from yourself because you never know down the road you're going to forget what it did you're going to use it a little bit wrong and then you're gonna be in some trouble unless you get lucky like me and find where the bug was so I talked fast this video that's my little spiel on protecting your code from yourself and debugging oh I'm gonna promote one more piece it just it's just so fun <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. Pshoom, 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 pshoom.
Okay, so here's one thing I want to fix. If I promote this to a queen, yes, it is check. The program knows it's check. It won't let the king move. It'll only let the rook move here. It'll only let this root rook take. But what did not happen is the little thingy dude did not update and say check. So I have to fix that. And I have to fix the castling logic. But I don't foresee that being too terribly awful. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.